Comrade uh, Vice Chair uh, Lisa, and to everyone participating uh, in person and for everyone who is online to take part in another one of these very important, very historic schools. Because it's quite clear, as the chairman just shared with us, that this electoral process uh, as a tool for uh, engaging the masses of our people, for organizing our, our people, for raising consciousness, and for keeping the focus on our ultimate objective, which is the defeat of this backward colonial capitalist state, ultimately, um, is, is where we are at today. It is the focus of this work. It provides the context for the work in the electoral process. We recognize, and I think the, the Black is Back Coalition has been in the forefront of this, that in the uh, changed conditions of today, the context that we are operating in, we see some fundamental weaknesses within the system. We see spaces in which we can advance our forces, but we recognize we can't advance our forces unless we have a clear understanding of how we move it a clear understanding of the, of the objective context, a, a clear understanding of what it is we are trying to, in fact, uh, transform uh, and, and win. Uh, so this is the, the objective of, of these schools, to provide us a space for those kinds of conversations, but also to provide uh, opportunities for people to build the kinds of skills that they need to engage in this electoral uh, this bourgeois electoral process. Again, with the clarity of understanding uh, its potentiality, but also more importantly, uh, its limitations. But uh, what's important about this school, uh, beyond all of that, is that it's been a, a, a marvelous tool that has helped to elevate the conversation strategically on how we approach uh, this area of electoral uh, politics. So the context is important that we always remind ourselves of the context because that helps us to ensure that we keep a focus uh, on the politics, that we keep our politics in command. And the context is this. Basically, we are operating within a situation, a context, in which we have a declining but yet dangerous empire. One that has determined that uh, in order for it to, to maintain its global hegemony, it is prepared to use naked, brutal power to do that. They have recognized that the ideological consensus that they have been able to impose for decades has now cracked. Uh, and therefore, in order for them, for them to, in fact, maintain hegemony and to utilize naked power, military power, they also have to have certain elements in place domestically, which means basically they have recognized that all opposition to their agenda of utilizing a military force um, has to be either isolated or eliminated. And that's the context that we are in here uh, at this moment. There's no accident that we have the focus of repression on the Uhuru movement and specifically the African People's Socialist Party and uh, Comrade Chairman O'Malley. There's no accident that we see the rise of these uh, cop cities uh, across the country, that we see this repressive, ap repressive legislation being championed by the neoliberal uh, 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 leadership class uh, African leadership, leadership class across the country. There's no accident that we have the, uh, again, the creative use, if you will, of RICO by the state. The objective is basically to either have uh, complete compliance or again, to eliminate opposition. That's the context we have operating in domestically. On the global level, we see that the, the colonial state uh, has uh, instituted policies of, of direct intervention 
we see some of the most creative and troubling uses of what the enemy is referring to in a way as a form of neoliberal pan-Africanism. What do we mean by that? We look at the situation, for example, in Haiti, where the uh, enemy has um, uh, carefully constructed an agenda, carefully constructed a, a perspective that has provided uh, ideological support for the notion that the Haitian people are in need of, again, another intervention, another savior mission, if you will, by the United States of America and its European uh, allies. And to do that, they have also constructed a very interesting kind of phenomenon, and that is that they have, uh, they're going to lift uh, troops, they call them police, troops from Kenya, from Benin, uh, and other African nations, including from Jamaica, the Bahamas, into Haiti in order to theoretically establish some degree of order. And it's been framed by the Kenyas, by uh, CARICOM, uh, the, the collection of Caribbean states, as a rescue mission, as a, a quote unquote, brotherly attempt to try to provide support uh, for the Africans in Haiti. And that's why this notion of Pan-Africanism and revolutionary Pan-Africanism and, 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 and African internationalism has to be dissected so the people are clear. Because if you're not clear, you'll find that the enemy will use these tools uh, to confuse and to justify their imperialist agenda. So we have this situation with Haiti. We have the expansion of subversion uh, throughout the uh, so-called Americas. Uh, we have the expanding military uh, footprint on the African continent uh, through the U.S. Africa Command. All of these, all of these together suggest that the context that we are operating in both globally and domestically is a context of war. That the enemy has decided that it's going to wage war in order to maintain uh, its hegemony. So this is the context we have in terms of how we approach the electoral process. Uh, you know, this, this election in 2024 is going to be a pivotal election. Um, and Part of what has to be talked about and debated is how we approach this. We know that the the uh, the neoliberal Democrats, and I, I wish I had time to talk about this whole issue of neoliberalism because there's a lot of confusion around this. Uh, many of us argue that we have to have clear uh, clarity on these these policies that we refer to as neoliberalism, which basically is a continuation of the colonial relationship, but. A, a, a particular kind of phase of that development in terms of the hegemony of a monopoly capital uh, and the hegemony uh, of the international uh, element of the bourgeoisie. Um, and we say that because, for example, one of the ways in which the the neoliberal Democrats uh, and, the, and neoliberalism that actually controls the colonial state in the U.S., what they have been able to use as part of their intra bourgeois struggle against nationalist forces represented by the Trump forces is this, this, this sphere uh, of Trump. And even though African people recognize all of the contradictions of democratic policy, uh, they understand that there's nothing that the neoliberal Democrats have to offer to African people and African working class and the working class and the oppressed in general, they've still been effective, that is, the neoliberals, in generating this irrational fear of a, a Trump. We even have some people that are so confused that they believe that these Trump forces represent a more existential threat uh, to African people than the neoliberal uh, Democrats. In fact, some of us have argued that the cutting edge of the new expressions of colonial fascism now being applied within the context of, of U.S. domestic politics uh, is being driven by, in fact, the neoliberal, um, the class forces that have made up the neoliberal uh, coalition of class forces uh, that control the state, 
uh, that are in alignment uh, with the ideological apparatus of the state, meaning uh, uh, big tech, uh, the the media uh, corporations, <clears throat> uh, uh, the energy companies, and then grounded grounded by the hegemony of 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 neoliberal uh, capital, international capital. Okay, now that's important because again, you know, this confusion allows for the Democrats to to manipulate and to uh, and to confuse our people. So this issue of having some ideological clarity, even if there's difference in terms of how we look at some of this stuff, is absolutely necessary. We have to make sure and have to be committed to the notion that we have to engage our people uh, in a, uh, uh, a, a principled way, We're understanding and recognizing the potential of our people to understand objectively all of the conditions that we face. I was just in a conversation with someone who knows should know better just yesterday, who, you know, run the, they run this line about, you know, where the people are at and how we've got to move the people because the people may not understand certain things. But my my retort has always been, it's not the people who ain't ready. It is the so-called uh, organizers, the so-called revolutionaries who are not really engaging the folks and helping to under, for them to understand the full complexity, because the people understand the contradictions. They may not be able to frame it in the kind of ways that would bring the kind of clarity uh, and, and, and politics that we need, but that potential is there, but it's not being utilized. And that's why this school uh, is important, and the work of this coalition is absolutely important. Uh, the system needs ideological consensus, and we have to be here to disrupt that. Uh, so when we talk about how we utilize the electoral process, we want to remind people that this process has to be part of a broader strategy for the winning of power, for the, 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 the capturing and the destruction of the colonial capitalist state that is still about uh, developing dual and contending power, that is about organizing the masses of our people and recognizing that the African nation is a uh, is a developing nation that includes not only of uh, the Africans on the African continent, but also Africans throughout the uh, African diaspora, including uh, the Africans in Haiti. That this process of liberation has to be a process of which we re-situated into a global process against this pan-African, this pan-European colonial capitalist white supremacist patriarchy. We've got to name the enemy. We've got to agitate among our people uh, with clarity and with confidence. That is the task, and that is our responsibility at this particular moment in history. Anything short of that is to lead to and to uh, uh, to help with the confusion of our people. And because of these forces have decided that they will blow up the world before they give up their power. Anything that does not help people to understand the, the challenges of the moment is in fact a, a reactionary and backward position. So this is what we have to uh, struggle with uh, Africans as we struggle with how we strategically move, utilizing the bourgeois electoral process, uh, how we understand the world and our relationship uh, to the current situation, the current context. These are some of the things we've got to grapple with before we even, not before, but as part of the process of developing the skills we need in order to take advantage of the contradictions of the enemy. This struggle is always uh, and had, always has been a struggle for power. It's all about building power for the people. That's our task, that's our responsibility, and I'm so glad that we are part of this process here uh, with the Black is Back Coalition. Uhuru, all power to the people.